thinking would be very, very easy for you then. You can create n number of uh, research problems, but you must follow what, what is behind all that art. You know? At any point of time, if you find there is a difficulty or some kind of issue in learning or understanding, please let me know. So what are the important things? So generally what we do is, in a research problem, we try to tell the different uh, issues that we are using. But please remember one thing. Again, practical. Suppose you have to file a research proposal to a funding agency. And you are very ambitious, so you will say, I'll do that, I'll do that. Do not claim or do not write a thing which you are not intending to do in this part. Because this part is all about the things that you would finally do. So do not write a thing, because sometimes we are a little extravagant in <coughs> saying that I'll do this survey, I'll do that. No. Here you have to be precise and honest about the issues that doesn't matter, you are doing a little less in number of the things, but make sure that you are limiting your research problem pro properly. See, limiting your research problem is the key. Your ability to limit the scope of your research problem and understand that what is the limit. So there may be many things. Sometimes you are con you confront a question that you have not done that. You can reply that I have not done many things. It's not the one thing. Because I didn't intend to do that. You are responsible for the thing that you intended to do and you have done it. Are you getting my point? Yep. So please remember that the research problem statement does three things. Problem justification. Problem definition. I mean, suppose I am saying this is the problem. I am dealing with the, the impact of this is an issue. This is the core issue. Every research has a core issue. And you should be able to tell that core issue in one word. So my core issue is impact of domestic violence on children. I have further defined it in order to measure it, in order to crystallize it, in order to develop variables from this and all that. But the core issue remains the impact. Now this problem has to be described in few lines in my research statement. You can start from a very general statement that domestic violence impacts drastically. Yeah, I would say there is a severe impact of domestic violence on children. Full stop. Do, do I have some data to corroborate this statement? So if I say that as many as 70% of juvenile offenders as per NCRB had a history of experiencing domestic violence in their past life. Let me stop. Now these statements have, are trying to contextualize the problem that I am about to define. Now if I say impact of domestic violence is seen in many ways. Full stop. The notable expressions are such and such. One, two, three, four. The present study intends to examine these four kinds of impacts of domestic violence in such and such city and such and such. For example. No? The importance of studying this problem lies the importance of studying this problem is from various viewpoints. It can be a clinical study, it can be a reformatory study, it can help the rehabilitation, it can help minimize kind of justification you can justification. Why are you studying studying this problem? So sometimes there are various justifications depending on the nature of research. Suppose your research is fundamental. So your quest of your research is only to gain the knowledge. If, if your research is applied, you want to contribute to the policy. Suppose the objective is applied. So then I write, the major reason of doing this research is contribute to the policy objective as this is the policy 
and these, these are the gray areas, and this research would contribute in improving the service delivery system in the ground and all those kinds of things. Couple of sentences in order to express clearly the likely contribution of uh, this particular research, right? Then, a specification of informational need. You also have a space to write who are your sources of information and how you intend to collect your data. You can say that the necessary data or information for the purpose of this study, you can also write this is going to be an empirical study based on the respondents to be contacted in these and these areas who have experienced these and these problem over past few years belonging to these socioeconomic categories and the kind of things. Taking together, it has become a precise, simple, and don't try to overwork. Actually, you are the victim of your own hard work. Sometimes you think that I have done hard work, but you have hardly worked. <laughs> so don't, don't do, see simplicity is very important. That's what I say. Your ability to write clear sentence, because see, why do people not write clear? Because if you are writing clear, you have to be clear in your mind. A clear mind would result into clear writing. As I understand, if your thought process is clear, your writing will be clear. So try to, you know, detangle things. They are entangled. And one, one sentence, one issue. Always have one sentence, one issue. Eight line me ekhi baat deal karo. Don't bring too many things. You will see, you try to do this, you will achieve a kind of uh, extreme clarity. मेरे पास जैसे यहाँ there is no student generally those who are doing LLM dissertation they don't come to me then then but मैं dissection तो पहले मैं language कर रहा था कि why have you written this sentence इधर सर ये तो थोड़ा ऐसे छोड़ दो आप मैं मैंने क्यों लिखा है ये तो सर लिख दिया तो the same issue the same example I give that in law schools and law you know schools when paper is distributed Later, copies are distributed first. So people will start writing without receiving the paper. In law. Constitution ka paper, you know, thin page. It would be adjusted with any answer. Because writing is sort of by the way. They start writing. If you say, paper to be the end, you can see that the paper is the end. You can see what is the appropriate question. Let's see, this is a fact, I have seen this, yeah, because they have to count the pages. So we need to be a little careful about our, uh, you know, this thing. Now, uh, let us see how these things can be applied to a genuine drafting of them. So I will demonstrate one drafting which I have a sample, I can show you a couple of more examples. And I am not asking you to be as it is. I am asking you to be more innovative. This is just a very basic <laughs> pedestrian example. And you have all potential to rise much ever to it. Please look at it. So three things you keep in mind and then look at. So problem statement, this is the first. The problem statement has three things. The problem itself, please state clearly with enough contextual detail to establish why it is important. You know? This you have to write. Then secondly, the method of solving the problem often is stated as the claim of working thesis. So you have a kind of idea. Uh, You know, so why I'm saying the problem that you are drafting, the method of solving, the purpose and the statement of object and scope of project B. So do little research, uh, reverse engineering. Suppose you have drafted a, some, some of you have drafted a research. 
Now you check with the help of these benchmarks whether these things are present in your drafting or not. Whether, so suppose you have to identify whether your problem statement has been correctly drafted or not. What is the criteria? This is the criteria. Statement of problem should clearly indicate what is to be investigated. Indicate the variables of interest. Now variables are very important. Variables are the precise issues like impact. Impact has been further crystallized into variable. Like impact is being seen as a as a as a medical treatment, as a psychological problem, as a dropout from a school. These are the variables through which the impact of domestic violence being studied. They should find mention in this. Now let us see how the problem can be studied. So first is, if I study the problem definition, so my first objective is, if research problem is here, the GT Credit Union Bank would like to increase the number of customers who take out loans through the bank over next year. But I'm sure of one criteria people use to choose a lender. This is a this is a research problem. You know? This is a research problem. So problem definition has been clearly stated. The first requirement is problem definition. It is there. Everybody? Can you see? Yes. This is a very modest example. I am not saying you should be verbatim like this. Why research is an optimal path? Second is justification. Now you have to justify why the research is the only answer to this problem. Because there is a problem, then you are saying research. Therefore, there is a research. So research is necessary in order to improve. Now research is necessary is justification. To improve the client's understanding of what criteria influence the bank selection, since no current information is available, research will help GT Union Bank to avoid costly target marketing and communication mistakes. So research will answer. So if I say, you apply this model to this research problem, what is the problem justification in case of this problem? Research is necessary to improve the service delivery mechanism to deal with the children who are the victims of domestic violence so that the institutions working in this field could be more strengthened, could be more and more strengthened. I have applied this logic here. Third is the specification of informational needs. Research will examine the decision-making criteria customer use. So now we will study how the customer reached to this particular decision to go to a particular bank. And what are the general attitudes of the customers, customers towards this particular bank. This, this serves the objective, third objective. Everybody is clear on this? Or any issue? Yeah, actually what we are doing, ultimately, ultimately, you need to understand three things we have discussed. One was the problem, other was the justification, and informational needs, means ultimately, what are the sources for your data and what kind of data you will collect in order to address the sorry. See, ultimately, what happens is you need to understand that certain data would be required for the purpose of your study. You know? Now, in this case, <clears throat> the decision making criteria used by the customer, because ultimately, what was your problem definition? Your informational needs are hidden in your problem. You read it. 
What, is, what was it? It was that what criteria the customer used in lending from a particular bank. So how the customers made the decision, ultimately. Now you can see here also, if I see the, what was the impact of domestic violence, so it means we want to understand what are the major consequences of domestic violence for the children. That, that, is, that is something what we are aiming at. So the core of research must be tied very tightly. Actually, never lose your grip as far as your uh, grip on the research is concerned. So now if I see these things together, seeing them together is now magic. Let us see. Now you read the composite research problem. It is drafted like this. This is the statement of so, huh. so, when we are talking about decision making criteria or when we are talking about general attitude uh, of customers, so uh, these are also vague. We will have to identify the factors. So, definitely, this is vague means this is the research statement. We have not reached to the level of crystallization where the variables would be drawn in order to measure the we have not reached to the data collection uh, process you, you are right we are using certain terminology for which we have the definition but here we are trying to tell the audience actually you always have the audience perspective in your mind you are intimating to a to an audience that this is a precise research statement and if required, you can define certain terminology here. But I agree that we have not derived yet derived the variables because variables deriving would happen at the stage of hypothesis creation. So let us see another slide, which is very important. And you need to look at the five P's in a research problem. Always remember, there are five P's in your research problem. And you need to read these five P's in your research problem. Now you look at your research problem. What are the five P's? So one of the P's is always there, which is predominant in your research. Sometimes <coughs> it can be more than one, sometimes it can be one. So people means your research is focused on group of individuals. Problems, you are examining a problem. Problems, where you are examining the problem. Phenomena, to establish the existence of its regularity at once. So suppose you are doing an evaluation of a uh, kind of uh, program, suppose uh, some, some housing scheme launched by the government for poor people. So if you want to make an evaluation, it would be a study of program. But if you are studying people, you are studying the advocates and their issues, in the court. It's people-centric research. Policy, if you are studying surrogacy, IP, cyber policy, these are the policy studies. So one of the P's would be present. So if you have to revisit your research problem draft, look at which, how many P's are predominantly present in your research. But reading P's in your research problem is, it would definitely give you some kind of uh, you know, reassurance as to what is your focus. Now, you might not have looked at your research statement in this fashion, but this is how it is done. Because I have told you in the beginning that I am not telling you how <coughs> research problem is drafted. I am trying to intimate you the principles behind the research problem. So these are the principles. Finding P, locating the problem, definition, locating the information I need. So suppose tomorrow, now you see where are you now. So suppose tomorrow if you are in a conversation with some expert, who is trying to understand what is your research problem. If you are conversing him or her with this terminology, then if he doesn't know, he would be in trouble. 
because you are not speaking a pedestrian language, you are speaking the language of an expert. So suppose, now if you ask this question to any researcher, what is the problem definition criteria in your research? What is the P's position in your research? Now these questions are suddenly become very expert and specific. No? Now this is the outcome of this workshop. I want you to understand these principles which would be capacity building principles. So let us see now uh, another thing. So are you fine now? Can you not tomorrow? Please note down that you would bring me a small draft of the statement of your research problem which we can discuss. Please try. If you do not do it today, tomorrow never comes. Please do it today. <clears throat> and, and please do not take it lightly. This is very technical thing. The point is we think that we know. But the mystery remains we don't know. <laughs> we have to do a lot of demystification. This is, this is very important because we think, you know, I think before a few minutes you were thinking research problem drafting with kya hai, we can write, para another page, ek page page or se, kai page likhte hai din, ek page or se, ye thik hai, ye achha gaya hai, then it occurs to you, you know, then I use all these things at some other places, you know, so it's very interesting. Now, I'll tell you the two more things only. How to draft the objective and how to draft the hypothesis. Now, as far as, please, also, you know, uh, remain in the know that there are three things which are, which are to be read in conjunction. Your research problem is emerging from your literature. Literature review you have done, and you have derived and contextualized your research problem in the context of literature that you have reviewed. So therefore, now you are ready with a research statement. Now your objectives must emerge from from they should not fall apart. Many times, I think if you have to assess a research, you have to look at whether the research objectives are emerging from the problem or not. And your hypothesis will emerge from the object. So they, these three things should be in a sync. Research problem, objective, and hypothesis. Is it, is it correct? Yes, sir. Or you have doubt? In the meanwhile, you look at, we always use action one to write the objectives. And objectives, the, what is the principle of writing again, certain principles? What is the first principle of writing the objective? The first principle, one, of, one issue and one objective. There should not be too many things to be stopped in the drafting of a single object. Is it okay? Can you tell me why there should not be too many things in one objective? See, you can simply say that this entire document will become a blueprint for implementation. Mm -hmm. Blueprint. Your research would be implemented with the help of this. So if your blueprint is vague because of <coughs> stuffing too many things in single component, then you won't be deriving any clarity out of it. So let us see that to determine, to find out for certain, these are the action verbs which we use. And uh, so for instance, there are descriptive objectives. To find out the opinion of the employees about the medical facilities provided by five star hotels in Mumbai. Suppose this is the objective I'm thinking. This is a descriptive object. Now, again, you have to go back to your research and understand what is your research model. If your research is 
purely descriptive. Or in the break, you, some of you were discussing law impact study. Or if your research is analytical, diagnostic, action, evaluative, your research, your objective would be written in that fashion. So see, how does it happen here? There are correlational studies. So suppose in some cases you want to do poor correlation. So to ascertain the impact of training on employee retention, I want to understand the extent to which the training is a factor in the retention of employee in a particular organization. This is the correlation because you are doing two variables. The impact of training on the retention of employee. Therefore, to compare the effectiveness of different loyalty programs of repeat flight test. The hypothesis testing study. Certain, so correlational studies, the hypothesis, uh, sorry, the objective would be drafted in this fashion. Certain studies are hypothesis testing studies. To ascertain if an increase in the working hours will increase the incidence of drug or alcohol. So my hypothesis is, in the organization where working hours are too many, the incidence of alcohol will happen. I want to test this hypothesis. Therefore, I have to test the objective. And therefore, this kind of draft will be used. Have you ever thought that this process could be so micro? That's what I said in the beginning, that we need to move on to micro. So everything that you do is preceded by a logic even the drafting of object. Now I have told you in the process there, is, there can be three types of objective drafting. Descriptive objective drafting, correlational objective drafting, hypothesis testing objective drafting. Is, is it becoming clear to you? Or becoming loaded for you? Are you fine? Yes. Great. So these are the things. I think this is enough for telling you to do the objective. The last part is, let us look at the hypothesis thing. I'll, I'll present you a very good study. Please read a book by Salashri Shankar. Salashri Shankar. You know what is the book? Uh, scaling Justice. Scaling justice. And hypothesis testing, I listened through this book. And I, I really I am very fascinated about this work. Please read this. And you will really like this study for various reasons. And not about the content. Again, read it for math, knowing the method. Read this book for knowing the methodology. Don't read it for knowing the content. Content, you can know it anyway. Read this book. I'll, I'll discuss some extracts of this work to tell you how a very good research model can be evolved. And I have reached from problem to objectives and I am into hypothesis building. Uh, before I get into, I just ask, what is the, what is the hype, what what is the role of hypothesis? Very good. Can anybody tell me? It guides us to. It keeps you on track. Hmm? It guides us to move in the right direction when we are doing. Does it really guide? Sir, it's what we want to achieve from the assumption at the beginning of the study, which we seek to test during the course of our. Yes, anybody else? I don't know. I have a serious issue with this entire business of hypothesis. I have seen many people writing hypothesis, but I have never seen anybody using that hypothesis finally in this. Anybody use hypothesis as dissertation of thesis? Many times we like I have rather seen. I have rather seen that you have presented a hypothesis in the beginning, but you have later on forgotten <laughs> what happened to that hypothesis. Then you have completed the thesis. I have checked a couple of people. So what did you do with that? 
How do you test? Uh, don't use us, actually not use it. We are using that hypothetical deductive method to test it. For social science methods, these uh, we, are, we are not, I think, uh, used to or master those techniques until now. See, why then we use hypothesis in legal research? It's not a question of if, if you are content of social nature in legal studies, so you have to use those methods. That is what we have been talking that we have to derive from various disciplines, the methodology, because we are in law is interdisciplinary. We are law content of, we are dealing with human being, we are dealing with human behavior, we are dealing with institutional functioning, we are dealing with policy. So management methodology, social science methodology, historical methodology, comparative methods, all these things are very much to be there. I just want to understand, because I have a historical problem. Because I have seen many theses which have decorated with so many of hypotheses and they didn't touch it in the end. They remain untouched throughout. Was it in conclusion and explanation we had to mention that what we did with our hypothesis? And you how have to mention it? means doctor has advised or what happened. <laughs> Who has, I want to understand what is the ultimate utility of the hypothesis in your thesis. Somebody, because in many places I have seen, it's not something, I'm not surprised with this uh, scary silence on this issue. <laughs> uh, this is quite a problem. I want to understand, how many of you have used the hypothesis? No, you see this scene. No, nobody will raise the hand. <laughs> Very good. Ranandir is the best person. <laughs> At least she has a Tabarity too. <laughs> anyway, anybody else who has mentioned hype? Doesn't matter. Let us let us be a little clear to ourselves. Yes, you have. So, on what occasion did you use uh, the hypothesis? The master master it. So, what was it? Okay, <laughs> I can understand. <laughs> so, anybody who has recently used it didn't do much with that. No, then, then why are we doing it? It's a problem. I, I tell you, I'll be again a little uh, blunt, saying that we perhaps do not understand the exact role of it. This, the, what you said is a kind of answer which I always get, the hypothesis is there to guide. No, not a guide. Hypothesis is basically certain questions which you formulated before the no, uh, is, uh, solution of the problem right, that you have taken. Right, right. And afterwards, they guide you in a particular direction which you want to achieve from your, I want mean to say, uh, research. Mm. Because of the reason, for example, they are in the form of questions. Mm. Whether it is happening, whether it is like this. Mm. So that lead you in a particular direction mm. where your research is going on. Mm. And afterwards, when you write your thesis, then you try to, uh, obviously, as you said, it, it might be in a good direction, it might be in a bad direction. So did we really guide or misguide what happened? I mean, so at least I you, mean, you are confined by that. Hypothesis deserve little respect in terms of revisiting yeah, them again. Yes. I don't know why we are so disrespectful to the things which we have created for that. Sir, hypothesis can be rebutted also because What's hypothesis sir? is something which after the preliminary reading, okay. the presumptions which we draw after an elaborate study, we may support what we you know initially thought or we may rebut what we initially thought. So what will happen with that? <laughs> it is also a possibility that if I am doing a quantitative research and she is doing a survey research, hmm. what the hypothesis, if, the, if her hypothesis stands true hmm. after her hmm. research, that yeah. may not be the case with me. Hmm. So maybe that is also something which we should keep in mind. So, so I think you have taken me to a different level and I am fine with that because sometimes now they are saying uh, that your hypothesis would ultimately reach to a level whether you will confront this position whether it stands, it holds true, or it doesn't. So in order to understand whether does it hold true or does not hold true, how do we know and what will happen and something? No, this is the gray area in fact. This is the major issue where we need to look at. And I'll, I'll take, tell you that why it happens. 
it happens for two reasons. Because hypothesis building, we take it very casually. Perhaps we don't understand that what is the difference between research question and hypothesis. Generally, when hypothesis is stated in the question form, we call them research question. And research question is a very kind of a student type thing that for uh, students generally they use in their uh, projects because. Even in empirical research also. Okay. But I say that if you see that uh, the UGC pattern or ICSSR pattern, they never encourage you to have research question, they encourage you to have hypothesis. See, the source of hypothesis is your study about the literature of that subject, because hypo source of hypothesis is the literature, or your general understanding about it. So Suppose you formulate a hypothesis, and what is the structure of hypothesis? Can anybody tell me? Yes, sir. Hmm. There are variables, hmm. and there are... <laughs> That's a structure of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Variables. And we have to connect and to okay. frame in such a way that we are mm. huh. going to. So suppose you have created a hypothesis describing <coughs> variables. Now what are the variables that we present in that uh, hypothesis? So there are two types of variables, independent and dependent. What is the connection between independent and dependent? The former is the cause, later is the cost. <laughs> cause and cost. So dependent is the caused one and independent one is the cause. So do you identify your variables clearly in the structure of hypothesis? <laughs> now suppose Go back to that study which you have cited. Suppose you are doing a study on the impact of domestic violence on children. What can be the hypothesis? Drug Impact of domestic violence on children. What can be the hypothesis? There is no significant impact of domestic violence on children. We need to bring it down to a little uh, more, because now you have to use variable. Now what is the variable, eh, the slide or up? I'll try to take you to a
am not finding, so <coughs> revised science is trying to tell you the how the variables are derived from the concept. You know? <coughs> so let us see, suppose. Suppose you have a variable impact of domestic violence. This is the cause. So what is the measurable that you can derive from it to be used in the hypothesis? In hypothesis, only you will use the variable. Concepts are not used in hypothesis. Did you get what I said? Concepts are not used. Only the variables are used. What is the difference between concept and variable? So trafficking is a concept. What is the variable? The variable would be like whether the child is being moved from one place to another. The migration, illegal migration. Illegal migration. Concept is constructed with the help of so many. Variables. A concept may have so many indicators. We need to understand what are the indicators. Like what are the indicators of trafficking? So, uh, one is exploitation. Other is movement of the child. So it can be health, education, personality of the child. So what I am saying is, suppose I say, what is the impact of domestic violence? So if I say the dropout. Dropout situation means ch ch children have stopped going mm -hmm. to the schools. They become dropout. So one of the consequences that we see on account of impact is their being dropped out from school. There can be several things. The other is, other is suppose they developed anxiety. Now anxiety is measurable. You know? Or if they say health issues. Kind of things, or uh, they become pro vagrant, vagrancy. You know what is vagrancy? Truancy. So, vagrancy. So, these are the consequences of. So, impact is being seen with the help of certain indicators. These indicators you have to decide. So whatever concepts you are using or you intend to use in the study, it needs to be looked at and identified with the help of measurable indicators. Measurable. A thing which you can put to measurement. So now how can I use in my hypothesis? Can you use now these some of these variables to frame a hypothesis for this purpose? I am talking a very strict, there can be little loose designs in God, generally we don't follow a very strict, concrete methodology design. But still, let, let us look at this. Presence of domestic violence in the family increases the risk of psychological issues. Psychological issues for gender, used. Make it used. The extra the rate of dropout is very high. So, you know, prolonged incidence of domestic violence in a family is likely to result in dropping out of it. Now, suppose this is the hypothesis. Now, this hypothesis can be put to test. Now, here I am revisiting my question and the crisis point which I have outlined that hypothesis are not treated in your thesis because we are not aware of the hypothesis testing methodology. So empirical research is a hypothesis testing research. You know what did I say? Empirical research is a hypothesis testing research. So if empirical research does not test hypothesis, it's not really the fulfilling the as a major assumption. Now, 
I again revisit to the objective. The concept is contained the nature of the individual. Concept is always constructed with the help of certain indicators. Every concept is designed with the help of certain indicators. On the concept, we generally speak in the language of concept, like we use justice, globalization, rule of law, equity, probity, conflict. These are the concepts. Now, these con social justice, these concepts cannot be put to measurement directly. social justice mila hai. Social meaning nahi Nobody knows. Because we never ask this question, what is the social justice? Kya hai social justice? Then yaap equality. Again, there was a problem with equality. There was no problem with equality. There was no problem with equality. This is all about this. Because if you start, I said, you will make others disturbed if you start asking precise questions. Because nobody wants to face precise questions. They require precise analysis. If you ask more about it, you will get very specific. How many income, 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 how many income. Vagueness was good. Confusion is always in my head. This is so subtle that we have to accept it. This is a good thing to point out. These are the facts. That's why the writing is vague, the writing is confusing, conflicting, contradicting. There is no system. I am telling you, if you are a good person, you will be able to do it. See, wherever you intend to measure a thing, suppose I want to precisely measure, suppose government of India asks you as a researcher that please make a study as to how the domestic violence is impacting the children who are living in the affected family. Now you need to first identify what kind of likely impact the domestic violence is, is there to cause. Now those impacts need to be studied in a very cause-effective fashion. Because sometimes the children is getting dropped out, not because of domestic violence, but because of some other reason. So whether the dropping out is the effect of domestic violence or not, because there can be a thing called a spurious relationship. This is not a cause and effect. This is a false relationship. Sometimes as a doctor, this is a kitab padhna or knowledgeable padhna. A false relationship bhi ho sakta. Jaruri nahi ki aap jada books padhe to samajdar bhi ho. Samajdari ka kitab padhne se goi shi mati nahi. Aap maan bhi jate in baat. Aap maan bhi jate in baat. Aap maan bhi jate in baat. You are mostly reconciling with you. So why sometimes testy or the... Anyway, nothing like that. So, you know, the original jurisdiction है मेरा इन चीजों के तो मैं अपने हिसाब से करता हूँ। Let us come back to she has asked very good question. I really so let us understand there are few terminology. एक राम आहूजा की basic सी book है उसको आप पढ़ लें in search of God. It's very simple. It it introduces you to the basic language of उसमें देखिए सबसे macro क्या होता है theory. सबसे माइक्रो क्या है वेरी गुड थेरी इज कंसिस्टेंट ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट थोड़ा सा मैं इसको बताऊंगा सो सपोज देयर इज अ वेरी गुड वेरी गुड एंड देन देयर इज कॉन्सेप्ट इन कॉन्सेप्ट और सो देयर इज अ थिंग कॉल्ड प्रोपोजिशंस Propositions are again statements explaining the relationship between variables. Then propositions are there in theory. So theory, propositions, concept, variable. We we are concerned with variables because variables are measurable, and empirical research is all about the things which are measurable. Like for instance, if I say there is so much crime in society, what does it? Say, you buy so much, you are so much, who is so much? 
if I say crime rate in Delhi is 500 on per lakh of population. Is the quantitative statement? Five, 500 per lakh of population. Per 100,000 people, there are 500 incidents. If I say there's so much of crime in Delhi, crime rate in Delhi is higher than Rajasthan. Maybe higher, higher, fewer higher, who's higher is. In which year or in which period? Uh, means I am just trying to convey the language. So variable means you are talking about a thing which is like income. Income is measurable. So yesterday, in fact, we were discussing in the first day that income, we have issues. Unless we know the exact amount, we don't know the economic status of the person. Therefore, there are many issues. So in, in order to make the hypothesis useful, because ultimately you need to understand what you are going to do with the hypothesis. Hypothesis gives a direction, I understand it gives direction, it is true, but as, as the real matter is not that. Real matter is hypothesis takes you to those precise you know, positions where the data collection becomes the main. Your data collection exercises become guided. Like I tell you, suppose my hypothesis was, can you reiterate the hypothesis which we had just mentioned? That hypothesis, what was that? Drop, drop out and <coughs> drop out and domestic <coughs> Prolonged <coughs> incidence of drugs. Now suppose this is the hypothesis. So you have this hypothesis. Now you have to collect the data in order to verify this hypothesis. Hypothesis is to be verified, it is not to be kept aside. Hypothesis need to be put to test. So in order to put to test, what you need to do? Please tell. You need to collect the relevant data. So hypothesis becomes an important point to decide about the kind of data you require. So in other words, hypothesis drives you to collect a particular set of data. Getting me? Yes. How? Because if I say there is a relationship between a particular nature of domestic violence and dropout rate. So I'll go and take a sample. Suppose I had decided to do this study in East Delhi, in five colonies, in the affected family, who I have sampled those cases. Suppose I have sampled 500 cases of domestic violence affected home. Now I have a list and I have done my sampling and now I am going to see whether the presence of domestic violence has resulted in how many cases it has resulted into the dropping out of children. So if I find in as many as 60% cases, 70% cases, 50% cases, the domestic violence was instrumental in causing the incidence of dropping out, then my hypothesis stands verified to that extent that it is a factor. So I cannot do unless I collect this data. Hypothesis I have, I have hypothesized a positive relationship being there between the two variables. Variable one is domestic violence. Even domestic violence I have defined, because domestic violence key definition is very broad. Wife put TV in the house, they have to domestic violence. Is it correct? Psychological. Psychological torture is also. So whether, whether the degree of domestic violence is relevant in making the children, are they fine with other forms of uh, domestic violence, just do not matter. So you have to go to micro, again I am coming, so micro. Micro of domestic violence and micro of impact. And the ability to go to this micro aspect is the eureka of the entire thing. This is the only thing which is involved. We avoid going to the micro aspect. If you probe a little deeper into the micro aspect, you really touch the chord. And unless you touch the chord, the music doesn't happen. That's why you are very superficial. That's why I said in the beginning, what was the issue? Issue was this that researchers are not using their hypothesis. They create hypothesis, but they don't test because we are unaware 
about the hypothesis testing process. The hypothesis testing process require you to be knowing that how the variables to be positioned in the statement of hypothesis and then collect the relevant data and see the relationship. Now there is another degree which we will discuss whether the so-called relationship which we have seen between the two variables is by chance or by design or by accident or by a certain regularity. It may be by chance. So in order to test the statistical significance of the relationship between the two variables, you need to calculate certain tests. I will not discuss this today because that would be a little disturbing. Okay. This is enough for you to know today that there can be a hypo no, there can be several hypotheses in this kind of study. You know? And each hypothesis would require you to create an interview schedule or a questionnaire and would require you to collect the data from the different set of respondents. Like, where does this hypothesis would lead you to go? This hypothesis would lead you to go to that home and talk to the people who are involved in that problem. Now you have to take a decision that who would be the most fitting person to give this information to you. Now suppose you are dealing with the the, the household, or the children, the wife, and the other people. So you can collect the necessary information from them. And bring that information and try to look at your hypothesis. Now you see whether your data support your hypothesis or not. And that's why I say in the end, you have to not only see that your hypothesis is proved or disproved, you also need to say, what does it contribute to? What does it contribute to the theoretical? Because ultimately, the legal research would continue to be doctrinal. Despite being empirical, despite being quantitative, you need to theorize your findings in order to place your findings in the broader theoretical framework of that particular subject. If you are doing an IPR or corporate law or environmental law, every subject has its own theoretical boundaries. So how does you locate your research into that particular Here I take a pause and just ask you, is it becoming helpful to you? Anything that you want to ask? Please ask. Do not carry your confusion. This is a very, very important stage. Because we started from, again, very quickly, we started from the empirical model which I have shown you here. And then I asked you to draft the research problem. And then I asked you to draft the objective. Then I have derived those objectives and then these hypotheses. Now this hypothesis building is a very, very precise exercise. Any question? Otherwise, I'll quickly just tell you this uh, Salishri's study I have part two just to impress you. Are you tired? Yes. Tired? Yes. I'm just telling you. Very good this study. I think uh, this will take you to this. Uh, this study is using certain hypotheses on anti cases, and the researcher is saying. The emphasis by laws on the power of the executive to fail. Now, this is not dealing with the variables kind of thing. This is doing very uh, emphasis by laws on the power of the executive to detail those suspected of entry that will be interpreted in judgment. So, there will be scope for this to negotiate with you. Judgments after the emergency will be more pro accused than. Please read this. 
judgments after the emergency will be more proactive than judgments issued before the emergency. Suppose this is the hypothesis. After emergency, the judges have changed a lot. The judges will focus on the rights of vulnerable citizens after the emergency. Now, this hypothesis can be done. A law researcher can look at the judgments, and this study has looked at. Single party majority rule decreases the opportunity for judges to issue anti state ruling. So suppose there is a single party strong government, majority government, this will decrease the opportunity to issue the anti state ruling. Anti state ruling means when terror cases are brought, so there are pro state ruling, there are anti state ruling. Fragmentation in the political landscape will increase the opportunities for judges to deliver anti state judgments. So there is a weak government, composite government, multi-party government, the judiciary remains strong in giving anti-state rulings. This, this, is a, this book by Shalashri Shankar has dealt with anti-terror laws and, and a very empirical manner. A threat to national security will dominate all other influences and the state more pro-state rule. You are seeing these things today also. No, I'm not saying, I'm not discussing the merit. I, please look at the method part only. Don't go into the argument side of this. You know, now, how this was done? Methodology. Three data set. High courts and Supreme Court that deal with the right to health is not important. You look at the anti terror case, you only look at the Supreme Court case in North America. Use keyword for case terms and they use strata. Probit techniques are skilled to be difficult to vary. Presumption. I'll just tell you the. Now, uh, how the researcher has collected the data from the cases? But in the during the tea break, you are discussing whether empirical research is possible to be done with the case laws. Now, this study has collected data with respect to these variables, characteristics of the cases, cases. These are all variables. You know, this type of data collection is possible from the case. Every case law has this information. <coughs> so, you can look at the, look at, for instance, disposition, appeal, upheld, or dismissed. Decision in favor of plenty for defendant. Description of cases. Explosive, wrong law, used, admissibility. Now, this is the coding which they have done. I don't have time today, otherwise. The, the coding is very interesting. You look at this. This is the coding that was done. Whether defendant was known or anonymous, reasons, due process followed or not. Very nicely done. So, from the court case data set, the variables have been created. The variables the, all these variables are measurable. So from the case law, you can collect the information like this type of cases. Now, type of cases, village, feudal, criminal, security, state, all these things. Now, how this data was used in this study? something which you must see. Characteristics of litigant was also available, this data. Political variable, all this information can be collected by law researchers from the case files. Basic traits, judge's name, career path of judges, means nature of judges. But the, the, this study is about what is the chances of giving a kind of verdict in a particular case and with respect to in the context of certain variables. The file of the case, the file of the litigant, dependent variable, what is the dependent variable? Judge, the dependent variable was verdict, means the judge was, judgment was upheld, the judgment was dismissed. I'm just giving you the outcome of that hypothesis. Health laws many, but I don't know what this is. 
Hypothesis one. This was the hypothesis. Post emergency judges are more likely to support social rights in their quest for public approval. Now, this was the test of hypothesis. You can look at it. This is observed in High Court during this, they have the immediate vivid memories of the Supreme Court's crisis of legitimacy. Now, this is the hypothesis result. Result seems to back our hypothesis that after the emergency, judges were keen to use social rights to enhance the institutional prestige of the court. But a decade later, the court did not need to do so and reverted to the seeing affordability of the state as the key criteria for the social rights. This kind of analysis is something which is genuine empirical legal. Please read this work. This is a very important uh, area. Similarly, I will not to go along all these things. Anyway, any question on this? No? We are fine with this because it cannot be finished because there are so many things that there is a limit. We have been listening to the past. It's too long a time. So fine, tomorrow we have a dinner session. Please come prepared for tomorrow or tomorrow. And please be on time. I am not saying that because some of you are not on time. No, we never say. It is embedded in the culture. Uh, the history of the history.